Many of us who have started our own business did it from scratch. We had no customers and no leads. We seemed to be so focused on getting that first customer, it appeared to be the only thing on our minds. But don't forget who else is cheering you on. Your family's sitting there with anticipation for you too. Then you get that first customer and the machine begins to roll. Today we're gonna to talk about the importance of work-life balance and keeping your family close to you instead of pushing them away as you start up your new business. We've been using House Call Pro since 2016. We needed something that would let us schedule our appointments, give our text directions to our customers through Google Maps, write up estimates, send invoices, collect payment, and integrate with QuickBooks Online. But they do so much more than that too. We researched over a dozen software programs and found that their price was less than half of the bigger CRMs. Housecall Pro is by far the most user-friendly for our technicians in the field too. We were able to go completely paperless and start creating professional looking estimates and invoices with our logo. Housecall Pro automatically sends appointment reminders the day before the job, lets them know when we're on the way and when the call is finished. Get a free demo of the number one app for home service pros by clicking on housecallpro.com forward slash foxfamily in the description below this video. That's housecallpro.com forward slash foxfamily. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. I started my company in 2015. I did so many things on my own at first. It seemed a little bit overwhelming. I was answering the phones, scheduling appointments, making the repairs, prepping all the installs, loading the trailer, doing all the installs, making deliveries, purchasing supplies, purchasing office equipment, paying bills, finding insurance agents, buying a service truck, building out that service truck, stocking that service truck, getting decals on that service truck, buying tools, creating relationships with vendors, figuring out what service parts I was going to be using for my customers, figuring out what brand of equipment I was going to be installing in people's homes, accumulating a maintenance club membership base one by one, marketing my company, going to business and networking groups, attending HVAC conventions, creating a website, created business accounts on Google, Yelp, and every single search engine so that I could be found online, created a Facebook page for my business and uploaded photos and messages to interact with my customers. And on top of everything else, I created a YouTube channel to start showing off my company to service techs and potential customers, which required me to shoot the videos, load the videos onto my computer, edit and produce those videos, upload the videos to YouTube, learn how to optimize those videos so that people would even see them, create thumbnails for those videos to make them stand out, and respond to incoming messages from technicians and customers alike. Whew! Still want to be a contractor? I know I left some stuff out too. Let's suppose that you still have the desire to start your own company after hearing all of that. It takes a lot of time to do all that stuff. Now, your family's going to be gung-ho about all the time and effort that you're putting into your new business, but after a while, they're going to start feeling left out. New business owners, heck, any business owner, can be found guilty of dividing their daily obligations into separate categories to fulfill all of those obligations just to get through another day. If you think your family has no business getting involved in what you do because they don't know the first thing about HVAC, think again. It's going to be too hard to leave work at work and keep your family life completely separate. If you win a job that you've been working hard to get, you'll feel great. If you lose that same job, you'll feel terrible. All that time and energy that you spent shucking and jiving just to be turned down for one reason or another. One thing after another can leave you feeling happy or sad when you get home. Either way, your wife is going to feel it and your children are going to feel it if you don't handle it right. This will eventually add up to tensions at home that might become irreversible. Eventually, husband and wife teams can start to look at each other differently. The person that you once thought was the most caring and understanding in the world has now become insensitive to your everyday problems. Little does she understand why you have to work such long hours just to make ends meet, right? So how do you keep this work-life balance? Now I'm no magician, but communication is the key to everything. Talk to your spouse about what's going on. Include them in the things that are important to you. If your wife joins you on the team like mine did, taking over the administrative side of things, you're going to have to remember that she doesn't work for you. Regardless of whose company it is, if you screw up that relationship, then what were you doing this all for anyways? Instead, respecting each other's role in the company is the key to making it work. Indeed, someone does have to be the president of the company and the next person on that chain of command will have to be agreeable and do their part to make this thing work too. 
If you as the principal of the company have a vision or an idea of the way that you want something done, then sure, you'll have to stand your ground. But pick and choose your battles wisely. Give independence to those who are working with you. Don't be a micromanager. Oh my God, these are all the things that you hated about working for someone else and now you're the one being a hard ass to work for. I'm clueless about the things that Melissa does for the company. I have a good idea, but if I had to take her job over today, I wouldn't do a very good job of it. For the most part, it's the same for Melissa. If she had to step up and handle the operations, building codes, service, and installation, she would struggle. So we allow each other the freedom to work independently. This keeps everyone happy at work and most importantly gives you a good head start at keeping things in order at home. No one gets in the way of my time with my family and my sports. I play ice hockey every week and I ride indoors on my bike almost every day on Zwift. Physical exercise helps keep my sanity. What keeps your mind clear? Is it fishing, hunting, playing a musical instrument, reading books, hanging out in the garage? Great, do it. It'll help enrich your life and keep you happy, which will reflect back on to what's most important, which is your family. It's important to want to be great at running your new business, but keep in mind the right work-life balance will help you maintain your personal life and your professional life. You're not just a business owner. That's only part of who you are. You had other things going on in your life before you started that business. Just don't forget that they're still there. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.